Number four. Oh, hey there, this is Dr. Evan Osar. Just uh, doing some biceps work before I get going with my writing here. Happy Tuesday, hope you're having a great start to your week. This week on Integrative Movement Insider, welcome, thanks for joining me on this topic of bicipital tendonitis. If you, if you work with clients that like training arms, many of our clients, eh, I like training arms. Love training arms. They love the tone, the, the look, the feel of that biceps burn, that work that they're getting in their biceps and their arms. Especially at the end of the workout, they feel like they've done something. I love it. When I first started training many, many years ago as a teenager, I would literally go in there like one day I would do biceps, the next day I would do triceps. That was my entire workout. So biceps work, however, creates a lot of issues for our clients and we don't think of it or they don't think of it and we don't think of it often as a cause of why people can have shoulder issues, especially biceps tendonitis. The biceps tendon, as you're aware of, attaches to the long head, attaches to the front side of the socket of your glenoid fossa and it actually fascially blends through the joint capsule or, or into and moves through the joint capsule of the shoulder and attaches to the labrum of the shoulder. Essentially, we can think of the biceps tendon, the long head, as that fifth rotator cuff. Because again, it blends into the rotator cuff. It actually is the only muscle that fascially blends directly into and upon the labrum of the shoulder, that fibrocartilaginous rim that's around the fossa to make that socket a bit deeper and helps to suction cup hold that humeral head on the glenoid fossa or the scapula. Well, what happens is for a lot of our clients is they tend to have that forward shoulder position, which is this position here. Well, if you think about your biceps tendon, you can actually feel your biceps tendon. So find the top of your acromion process. So kind of right here and then slide your fingers down into that groove. And for many of us, if you have shoulder issues or chronic shoulder tightness, you may feel a little tenderness there, which I do. A lot of my manual therapy work is down like this. So it does put a lot of stress on the biceps tendon. Well, the biceps tendon, in addition to doing elbow flexion and also assisting shoulder flexion, it doesn't really flex the shoulder, it really assists flexion of the shoulder. The biceps tendon is really a guy wire that sort of protects and holds, I should say, guides the humerus when you go through movement. So essentially it's an anterior guy wire for the shoulder motion. So that, that when the deltoids and the pecs move the shoulders either this into flexion and or horizontal adduction, or the muscles on the back of the shoulder bring it into extension and or you know, the muscles at the side go to abduction, that the humerus glides on the biceps, long head of the biceps tendon, and therefore the shoulder stays stable or remains stable. Well, if the shoulder comes forward, now the biceps tendon, which should be, just be guiding shoulder motion, now you're asking the biceps tendon specifically to hold, hello Mary Trilla, how are you? To actually hold and support the weight of the shoulder. It's not designed to do that. So now as the arm starts to go through its motion, flexion or horizontal adduction, now you start getting grinding or, or the humeral head, or I should say the bicipital groove of the humerus starts grinding or gliding against that tendon. And now you start to get irritation of that tendon. So one of the things, hey, Stephen Head, how are you, sir? Good to see you as well. Thanks for being on. So one of the things that causes issues with a biceps tendon is when you have that forward shoulder position, which is really the anterior tilt of the scapula. And again, this is so important because in order to take stress off the biceps tendon, you need, we need posterior tilt of the scapula, which is this motion right there. Unfortunately, unfortunately, this is what creates a lot of issues is it's, a ch it's challenging to get that shoulder to go into posterior tilt because you have a whole lot of powerful muscles, pectoralis minor being one of those muscles, latissimus dorsi, that even though it's on the backside, it pulls the shoulder down and forward. And that's why it's so hard. And then you and I, as health and fitness professionals, we get taught to do what to our shoulders? Squeeze back and down. That will also create this bicipital tendon issue when you don't have the ability to go wide and you don't have the ability to go into posterior tilt. Now it takes, I should say, it's beyond the scope of this little video here to, to describe all the things we need to do with our client to get them to, to get into upward rotation and posterior tilt of the scapula. Here's one thing. 
is cue your client not to squeeze your shoulder blade into their side and not to squeeze it down and back. Create space in between the arm, the upper body, the arm and upper body so that when you're doing your row or they're doing their rows, when they're doing their pulls or their overhead pushes, that you have space here which will allow the scapula then to go into posterior rotation. Because what you really need is if you feel your collarbone, the clavicle right there, you need the clavicle, the collarbone to rotate, to posterior posteriorly rotate, and that's what ultimately creates that upward rotation. Well, if you squeeze your shoulder blade down and back, you are compressing the collarbone, the clavicle, on top of the rib cage. That inhibits the ability to get posterior rotation of the scapula. It inhibits your ability to get wide or width across your shoulder. You will get impingement. You will get bicepital tendon issues. You will also get neck pain because when people go to curl then with that anterior tilted shoulder position, you, they're curling themselves right into anterior tilt. They're doing push-ups. They'll push up. They'll do push-ups directly into anterior tilt of the scapula. So that's why aligning, teaching your client how to align and control the scapula is such a huge part of the strategy to address chronic rotator cuff, chronic bicep tendon, as well as chronic neck issues, or that trigger point in the upper back, which is really the, the, the levator scapula, which is being driven, or should I say being asked to create stability, more stability than it's designed to do. So if you understand this concept, you're able to help your client create a strategy. Like I said, the best cue, think about being wide or creating width across the shoulders. Stop squeezing down and back, which is actually inhibiting optimal clavicular motion, which inhibits opti optimal scapular motion, which inhibits the ability to move the scapula, the entire shoulder complex in the optimal position for upward rotation, posterior tilt, and optimal shoulder function. We're gonna discuss all things rotator cuff, bicepital tendonitis, labral issues in the brand new series of two anatomy geeks. Again, the cues you use are very important. We're going to teach you the cues that we use most commonly to help our clients with chronic rotator cuff, as well as neck issues, as well as labral issues, as well as bicepital tendonitis issues, and other issues like thoracic outlet. They're all related to the same exact posture and mechanics, suboptimal posture and mechanics. So we want to think about, Phoebe's over here, it's her lunchtime, so she's, she's going to start getting a little loud here in a moment. We're going to discuss the anatomy of the shoulder complex, so that way you understand how the shoulder should function, and most of us have not learned shoulder function the way it's, des it's actually designed to function. We're going to discuss also how common cues and common exercises directly contribute to shoulder issues and why squeezing down and back is not the right strategy for a lot of our clients. Even the clients that have forward shoulders and, and increased kyphosis, you can't just have them squeeze back and hope that that changes their mechanics. It changes the position. It rarely changes the mechanics of the shoulder. So again, you may need to do, to do a bit of retraction, but that's just a piece of what they need to do. They need to learn how to control it both through the concentric motion, but even more importantly, during the eccentric motion. Because just squeezing the shoulders back actually disrupts the optimal mechanics that has to happen during eccentric control or when you're bringing the shoulder back down from an overhead position. So we'll teach you about that as well. And then most importantly, we want you to use this anatomy knowledge to create the best assessment so you can assess your client, whether you're working virtually and or in person. And this will also help you then determine the most effective exercises and the most effective exercise cues to address these common issues. And you can really help a lot of clients. And again, this is the same strategy we use. I use directly with these clients. I mean, I get, I'm getting calls from all over the world. I just, I'm working with a, a guy in Singapore right now with shoulder issues. And again, they're reaching out to me because all the things that they're traditionally learning, like he's already in physical therapy, but they're teaching him the same thing that everybody else is learning. Squeeze down and back, grab a band, do scapular retractions, do depressions, you know, strengthen the serratus anterior with these punching exercises. It's not changing the strategy that they're using. It's strengthening muscles, not changing the strategy. And that's the important concept that we'll share with you in this brand new series of Two Anatomy Geeks. I put the link next to this video. If you're watching it here on Facebook, you can also find this on our website, Discover IMI. Jill and I have a three-part series, two, three. <laughs> two Anatomy Geeks have a three-part series coming up this September. We're gonna share all things shoulder. When you leave this series, you will understand the shoulder. You will understand what causes shoulder common shoulder issues in your clients 
and more importantly, you'll have a strategy for addressing these issues. So jump in. We'd love to see you. It's a great community, like-minded individuals who are just looking to up-level their knowledge, their skill sets, so they can create more powerful changes and really become that go-to resource in your area. And when I say that there's not a lot of people that understand and use this information, there's not a lot of people that understand and or use this information. So hope that helps. Hope it makes sense. And we'd love to see you in Two Anatomy Geeks, the brand new series. Look forward to seeing you then. Until then, have a great day. Go out there, be the leaders. Be the person that brings people together instead of the person like we see so much in our society right now that are creating division. Bring people together. Allow them to see the greatness in the world through your leadership. And that's how we will change the world. This is Dr. Evan Osar with Discover IMI. Make a great day. And we look forward to seeing you in Two Anatomy Geeks. Take care. See you next time.